Hello everyone, Michael here, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I'll be telling you why you should buy the Sony a7C over the a7 III for video. Let's get started. First off, why should you only get this camera if you're going to be shooting video? That's because most of the upgrades on this camera from the a7 III are geared for video shooters. If you're a photographer or even a hybrid shooter, you want that nice viewfinder. And a lot of photographers are hating on this viewfinder as well as the viewfinders on the a6000 series because it's too small and it's placed on the left side of the camera and you can don't have dual car slots which you can record and I, for example jpegs on one and raw files on the other and you don't have that nice grip which you have on the a7 III so if you're carrying your camera in your hands all day taking photos it starts to get quite heavy especially with the ginous, ginormous Sony E mount lenses. So why should you get this camera for video? This camera, the Sony a7C has better autofocus compared to the a7 III. The a7C borrows the ability from the a7S III, the newest Sony camera, to change the autofocus transition speed and autofocus shift sensitivity. And the bigger factor for me that is that this camera has eye tracking and face tracking in both photo and video. The Sony a7 III only has eye tracking and photo, not video. This camera has it in video as well. The Sony a7 III autofocus system is by all means not bad. It's quite good, but this autofocus system just takes it to a whole nother level. Even as seen in camera conspiracies comparison video between the a7C and the a7 III, you can clearly see that the a7C is a clear winner in talking headshots. Reason number two is the Sony a7C has arguably better colors than the a7 III. Sony claims that this camera has better color science, however it still only has 8-bit color depth. The a7 III is known for its terrible magenta look. And this camera fixes that magenta problem, but it introduces a bit more of a green hue in the shadows. But if you were to ask me, I'd prefer the green hues over the magenta terrible look any day because it actually gives it sort of like a cinematic feel and the magenta just looks terrible. Reason number three why you should buy this camera over the a7 III for video is because this camera has no overheating and no recording limit. The a7 III has a 30 minute recording time limit and this camera can just record and record. This small change will make a huge difference when you have to shoot a longer interview or an event. Finally, last but not least, at number four, this camera has the flippy screen, which is, well, I'm using it right now to look at myself while I'm recording, making sure that everything is great. Also, when you're shooting on the gimbal, you can flip the screen up and it's much easier to use. Now, some people will bring up these downsides when comparing the a7 III to the a7C. Of course, if you absolutely need that dual card slot in your camera, you will have to pick up the a7 III because there's no workaround on this camera. If you want the custom buttons and the front dial on the a7 III, by all means, if that is something you really need, Need, go for it get the a7 III however on the a7 III you have one custom button and you can customize all the other buttons on the camera to do whatever you need them to do which is what I have done on this camera and I don't feel a need for more custom buttons sure you're gonna miss out on the front dial but when you're shooting video and this goes back to the main title if you're shooting video you're gonna have your shutter speed locked at 1 over 50 or 1 to 50 if depends on what you're shooting so you don't need to be adjusting your shutter speed you only need to adjust your ISO and your aperture so in theory you only need two dials so the back dial I use for my aperture and the scrolling wheel I use that for my ISO problem solved and yes I know this camera has a much smaller grip I put my Sigma 24 to 70 on this lens and it is very front heavy but I just got a top handle for this camera if I'm ever shooting uh, handheld and it solves the issue for me and I'm using my gimbal 80% of the time anyways so the small grip is not as a big of an issue for video as it would be for a photographer because you can just buy a top handle or this rig that's on the screen right now or use a gimbal. So in conclusion when you're buying the Sony a7C you're only really for video you're only sacrificing the dual card slot but you're getting better autofocus, better colors, the flippy screen, no recording, time limit, or overheating. And you get this all in a smaller package, which means lighter, it's easier to pack and carry in your already probably heavy camera bag with all the lenses you're gonna be carrying. If you already have the Sony a7 III, I would also not really consider switching to this camera as the Sony a7 IV could be coming out next year. But if you're like me, someone that switched from another system and I wanted to switch to the full frame, 
and the Sony a7 III, the newest model, is just too expensive for me, and you're shooting video, it just makes sense to get the a7C. So if I actually helped make you a decision in buying a new camera, please leave a like, comment down below what camera you actually ended up buying, subscribe for more new videos, I'll be posting a review of the Sony a7C soon, I've been shooting with it all week, I have tons of footage, can't wait to get that video done for you guys, so make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.